So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Next week I'll be uh, preaching a sermon that God gave me uh, a week ago. Not this week, but a week ago. He woke me up at 3.03 in the morning. Okay? And uh, he said, you need to preach this sermon. <clears throat> he, gave me the, he gave me the subject matter, the title, in the scripture, and then he allowed me to fill in all the blanks. And so hopefully next week you will be here. Uh, it has specifically to do with prayer. He, is, he, he, just, he doesn't do that to me very often. He knows I need my sleep, all right? Uh, but I hope you'll come and share with us uh, the sermon about prayer. Today I want to talk to you about submitting to government. Submitting to government. And I know that alone can have a ne negative context, uh, but the Word of God is very clear. Uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, you know, who penned this and uh, straight from the Holy Spirit, straight from God, uh, realized there need to be a chapter in the Word of God about this. And I understand, you know, uh, there, you know, our government is not doing, you know, everything I feel like they need to be doing. I don't agree with a lot of what they're doing, but I think the Bible is very clear on what we should be doing as Christians. So we are looking at that this from a Christian's pr perspective. If you have a bulletin and are following along, uh, submitting to government, number one, obey all authorities. Obey all authorities. And uh, we know what authorities are, folks. These are people in le leadership positions. Uh, authorities are also uh, those who police us, okay? Uh, we should not be afraid of the police, and I will be talking about that here in just a few minutes. Number two, be a Christian example. It doesn't matter what other people are doing, okay? We have to do what the Bible tells us to do. We need to do what God tells us to do. And number three, love your neighbor. One of the things when I came here, that God told me to say over and over again is there's two things that we need to do in our church. Number one, we need to love God. And number two, we need to love others. And uh, we have tried to do that uh, as much as we can, so we will see this uh, in our sermon today. You know, God has established three institutions in his holy word, the home, the government, and the church. All can be found uh, in Genesis 2, Genesis 9, and Acts chapter 2. Paul wrote Romans 13 for the Christians that lived in the very heart of the Roman Empire. Even though Christianity was a Jewish religion, uh, the Roman government allowed it to ex exist despite Jewish opposition in the scribes and the Pharisees. There are even people today that think it's okay to disobey laws, rebel against authorities, participate in rioting, and let men do what they think is right in their own eyes. Paul rightly addressed these issues in the first part of Romans chapter 13. Let's look at what the Bible teaches us about the government and Christianity. Romans 13, 1, obey all authorities. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. Can you imagine what life would be like if we had no authorities? Could you imagine... Uh, you know, uh, driving in traffic with no stop lot, no stoplights whatsoever, and no rules. Can you imagine how what chaos would be? And really, folks, it would be a thing of uh, you know the the most powerful will be the ones that rule. And folks, we have to understand God set up government for a reason and a purpose. And uh, you know, laws were set up to be obeyed. That's why we call it the Ten Commandments. If we did not enforce laws, I am telling you, only the strong would survive. So we understand that God set this plan up in the first place. For there is no authority except of God. I got news for you folks. I understand Congress. I understand, uh, you know, the, the chain, you know, uh, of authority. But I am telling you, God runs this world. God is in charge of this world. And you have to understand, 
God sometimes just allows people to get in office or even in, in, in you look in the Bible, people that would discipline his children. When I think of the Old Testament, I think of Pharaoh, okay? Pharaoh, he, he was, you know, a mean, uh, you know, the children of Israel had to make brick. Uh, they, were, they were just, you know, Pharaoh just kept doing the wrong thing, and they were literally slaves. And then when you think in the New Testament, and I think of Paul, here was Nero was in charge there. And you know how ruthless he was, and he was a man of, you know, no mercy. Matter of fact, the, you know, we, we think uh, Paul was, uh, you know, uh, murdered. He, he was killed uh, by Nero himself. So we see these things in the Bible. But the bottom line is, folks, everybody answers to something, somebody. I had somebody ask me, a little kid asked me one time uh, in church. They, I was in the hallway, and they said, Brother Mike, I want to ask you a question. And I said, okay. And you never know what a kid's going to say. And, and the little boy asked me, who's your boss? And I had to think about that. I understand the church is my boss, but folks, I answer to God. I will stand before God and give an account of how I pastored the Rye Hill Baptist Church. So we all have bosses. We all have authorities, and they are appointed by God. God allows these things to happen in our world and in our life. And I understand we are headed the wrong way. But folks, what you have to understand is what is going on now is going to play right into the hands of the end times. Okay? We are walking right through the end times. Things are being set up right now for the Antichrist. And if you would understand that is real, that is going to happen, it will make a lot more sense to you. For there is no authority except from God, the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Hey, you, you don't have to do all, and I apologize for the cough drop. Just, I'm still, I'm, I mean, I'm much, much better, uh, but when I speak, I tend to cough, and I don't want to cough uh, while, I'm, while I'm speaking. You have to understand that these people, these authorities, have been placed to help us, to help us. Uh, our kids should not be afraid of policemen. They should not be afraid of that. Uh, and and you, you have to understand there's good leaders and there's bad leaders. For rulers are not a terror of good works, but to do evil. You want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the, uh, from the same. If we are not breaking the law, then why do we fear? Okay? It's like when a policeman comes up behind you and you're driving down the road. What do you do? You let off the, the gas. You could be going the speed limit. You could be going 45 miles right out here, which most people don't do. But, it, you know, we shouldn't be afraid of authority. Policemen are there to help us. Verse 4, for he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. Folks, if there were no laws, you know, it's, it's like Genesis 9, 6. I know there are people that are totally against capital punishment, but it says, uh, you know, that if a man takes a man's life, his life needs to be taken. And I understand all that, but what, you know, what it does is it deters. It's a law that uh, maybe the guy that's, Fixing to do that might think about that. Okay, just, just a small example. Uh, if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear a sword in vain, for he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Folks, laws were written to protect people, and we should not resist authorities that God puts in our life. 1 Peter 2. Go with me to 1 Peter 2, if you would. 1 Peter 2. The Bible says, verse 13, 
Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise for those who do good. Folks, how simple is that? If you do good, you're not going to be punished. All right, but if you break the law, you will be punished. And these authority figures are there to keep the law. Verse 15, for this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Just because someone who even calls themselves a Christian has an opinion about something, if it is contrary to the Word of God, then folks, it's foolishness. We have to follow the Word of God. We have to follow it as free not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. Now look at verse 17. Honor all the people. Folks, pe treat people with respect. Honor people that are in office. Honor the office. I understand. You know, it's not about politics. Okay, I don't, I don't even go there. We should honor the office. Love the brotherhood. Fear God, respect God, and honor the king. Then in Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, verse 28. And again, Peter and John, uh, you know, were preaching the word of God. Uh, they were healing folks. They were talking about Jesus, and they were thrown in prison. And then uh, in verse 28, these guys say, did we not strictly command that you not teach in his name? Folks, this is where I get when I say the government is not going to tell me what I can preach and what I can't preach. Okay? There's freedom of speech, folks. This is a church house. We will speak and preach the word of of God. And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. Well, I got news for them. <laughs> it was their fault. They did crucify Christ. They yelled that, crucify him, give us Barabbas, a thief, a murderer they would rather have than releasing Jesus Christ. And here it is, but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Folks, we are going to follow the word of God. We don't. We, we don't. When there's an issue in hand, and folks, one of the issues uh, out there, and it's still out there, and they're still fighting over it, is the issue of, ab of abortion. And let me tell you this, folks. Life begins at conception. And we as Christians need to obey the Word of God. And I know what some people will say, but in certain cases, it should be. Folks, there are thousands of couples that would take a baby and raise that baby in a Christian home. And I am simply saying, the government says it's okay. God's Word says it isn't. We will stand up for the unborn. I was so glad on issue number four. I just thought, surely Arkansas is smarter than that. There was $10 million spent in advertisement in the last two weeks to legalize marijuana. And folks, it's a different thing if it's medical marijuana. If it's written by a doctor, that is one thing. But we don't need people high driving vehicles from party to party. I, we just don't need that in our, church, in, our, in our town. It's dangerous. So what I'm saying is when there's, and, and you have to realize there are moral issues and there are spiritual issues. And a lot of times man gets the moral issues wrong. I am telling you the spiritual issues are from God and we are going to stand on the Word of God. So we need to obey all authorities. Number two, be a Christian example. Be a Christian example. Look at verse 5. 
Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but for conscience' sake. Conscience' sake. And, and again, you have to watch the conscious thing because it depends sometimes on your raising. There are traditions that families do that may not be right, but their families or they have been taught by their parents or their grandparents, it's okay. And what do we have? And, and again, I'm not saying anything's wrong with having a conscience. You need a conscience. But you go as a Christian by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will tell you when it's wrong. The Holy Spirit will tell you and lead you and guide you and tell you what to do. Verse 3, for because of this, you also pay taxes. Now, I don't know anyone that would raise their hand today and say, Brother Mike, I love to pay taxes. <laughs> I think it's high. I think they're high. I think, you know, maybe we could do better than what we're doing. But again, we have to support the government. We have to pay taxes. Folks, we're talking way back in biblical times this has been going on. It takes money to run a government. And so while we might be a conscientious, conscientious objector, I'm just telling you, he clearly says we don't need to have an attitude about that. Wasn't it Jesus himself that said, render unto Caesar that which is to Caesar, and render unto God that which is God's? There's two things you're going to have to do in life. Number one, you're going to die. Okay, that is no options. If you live long enough, you're, you're going to die. Number two, you're going to pay taxes. They're going to find you. All right, you may try it for a while, but I don't think it's going to work out for you folks. So if, if you're like me, when I owe, I wait for the latest deadline that I can find, and then I send it in. But folks, we as Christians need to pay our taxes. and For they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, and honor to him that honor. And then he makes the list there, not just taxes, all right? But folks, if we owe a debt, we need to pay our debts. We need to pay our bills. We need to pay our bills on time, okay? That is a testimony. That is a testimony. And we need to do that. Uh, our conscience is, is good, but we basically, folks, need to do the right thing. It's how our society functions. It's how our, you know, Social Security, all that, you know, comes out of checks. But you know what? Here's the way I think of it. I just thank God that I have a job, and I thank God. It's like the gas prices. You griping about the gas prices isn't going to change anything. You're going to pay the price, all right? So, you know, have a good attitude about that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like what my grandma used to say, be careful what you say. Think before you speak, all right? Because we are being Christian examples to people around us. Colossians 3. Colossians 3. Go with me to Colossians 3. Verse 17. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. Folks, all of our actions, all of our word should be Christian. Because you know what some people say? You know, there's bad cops. And there, it's been on, and there are, folks. There's bad everything. Okay, you can basically pick out any any group of people there are bad teachers but you know what the bible is telling us you know what this bottom line is being a christian example there are also bad christians think about it some of the words that come out of christian's mouth i've heard people say this i i heard i i heard i have heard people say well i thought you called yourself a christian Ugh. and that's rough folks so, you know, when we start judging others and we get, you know, get upset with others, we still have to look at ourselves. Yes, there's some bad apples. Yes, we need to take care of those. 
Yes, they need to be prosecuted by what the law says. But be careful when you are judging others. Be careful because when is a time that I'm not a Christian? When is the time I'm not a pastor? Folks, I can be on vacation. I'm still a pastor. I can be out riding my motorcycle and I can still be a pastor. Everywhere we go, we are still Christians. So we need to be Christians in word and in deed. Go with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. We were looked at chapter 2. Look at chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Peter 1, 13. Because, you know, people use that excuse, folks. They're, they're bad cops. They're bad people. They're bad Christians. But I think of the story of David and King Saul. David had already been chosen and anointed. And he stayed, and Jonathan was his best friend. And his dad was King Saul, who, who God took the kingdom away from. And what did King Saul do? He tried to kill him three times. David had a chance to kill him in a cave and be rid of that. But what did David say? I will not raise my hand to God's anointing. So folks, you, you need to think about that, okay? Because what happens is when people get upset, they act crazy sometimes. Just turn the news on, okay? We cannot let that anger possess us and make us do things that we should not be doing as Christians. Do the right thing every time. First Peter 1 Peter 1.13, Therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Sober is serious. Girding up your mind is think before you speak. Think before you act. There is consequences to everything you do. I wish I had a dollar for every time my dad asked me when I got in trouble, boy, what were you thinking? And this doesn't work, okay, youth, this doesn't work. I wasn't thinking because our conversation got worse, okay? Think before you act. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy. Folks, we are Christians. We ought to rise above these things. We ought to set the bar high. We ought to lead, live a clean life. We ought to be, you know, without excuses. And I'm not talking about sinless perfection. We're all going to mess up. But when we mess up, we need to say, I'm sorry. We need to say, I was wrong. And we need to ask for forgiveness but as he who is holy you be holy in your conduct in all your conduct because it is written be holy for i am holy i don't know about you folks but i want to be like jesus i don't want to be like everybody else i want to be like jesus so in submitting to our government we need to obey all authorities be a christian example and the third thing is love your neighbor Love your neighbor. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Folks, I am telling you, when it comes to Christianity and being Christians, we should love everyone. It doesn't matter the color of the skin. It doesn't matter what country they came from doesn't matter how many tattoos or how many piercings or what they have on or whether they smell like us, okay? We need to love everyone. Matter of fact, Jesus was, Jesus was questioned by the lawyer, and he said, well, who is my neighbor? Let me give the answer. We, we, we know the story in Luke chapter 10, the Good Samaritan. Let me give you the answer, all right? Who is my neighbor? Everybody you come in contact with. 
It's not just the people in your neighborhood. Well, most people don't even know the people in their neighborhood now. But everyone we come in contact with is our neighbor. And it and love fulfills the law. See, there's a difference in duty and desire. Duty is you've got to do it. You have to do it. Desire is you want to do it. Okay, we can do our duty, but most of the time when we have that kind of attitude, it's not the attitude that we should have. Folks, people know when you're, when, you know, when you're not sincere. They know when you say something and you really don't mean that. Don't do it out of duty. Do it out of desire of pleasing the Lord. And then he gives some commandments here. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. What is he doing? He's just listing the Ten Commandments there. The Ten Commandments. And, and if you think about that, the first five is our relationship with God and the rest, the, the last five, uh, our relationship with others. And it says, and, th- and if there is any other commandment are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, in talking to a lawyer uh, a second time, Matthew chapter 22, Matthew 22, go with me to Matthew 22. Matthew 22, verse 35. Then one of them asked him, a lawyer, a question, testing in him. And that, that is funny to me. I got news for you folks. Jesus knows the answer to every question in life. Okay, you, you know, and I'm not dogging lawyers, all right? We need lawyers, unfortunately. Not, not in a, I don't mean that on their personality. <laughs> okay, I better keep going. <laughs> Teacher, which is the great commandment of the law? Would you understand that there were 613 laws, the scribes and the Pharisees, 613 of them. And how many of us keep, would even come close to keeping those? Jesus said in the end, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Folks, if we love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind, we will love our neighbor. Why? Because Jesus loved everyone that way. This is the first and great commandment. And notice the second one. It is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So out of 613, he put one and two, is love God and love your neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. So we see how important love is to a Christian. We see what how important love is to the world. And folks, that's what's missing in our world. It's like everybody's mad. It's, every, it's like everybody has a chip on their shoulder. We need to show the world love. And then verse 10, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. John chapter 13. John 13. John chapter 13, verse 34. Jesus said this, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Why? Because, I mean, people would take the Old Testament and say an eye, an eye, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. All right, and and be strong, you know, about that. But he's saying, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you love one another. By this... All will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Folks, people want to hang around people who love them. People want to go to church with people who love them. People want to be around people that love them. We ought to be the lovingest bunch on on the face of the earth. And then, back in our text, Let's look at verse 11, and we'll finish with this. Love your neighbor, and do this, back in Romans, knowing the time, now it's high time to wake out of sleep. Why would he end this here? Why would he, why would he say this? 
you think about it, folks, some people and some Christians are just, just falling asleep. You know, they don't, they don't even look at the world around them and they don't engage with others knowing that there are literally millions of people that are going to die and go to hell because they don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. For now, our salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the work of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Folks, we live in a dark world. We live in dark places. And we, we see Satan working everywhere in all places. I just, my heart just broke last week when I heard, you know, of, of another shooting, a senseless shooting of, of football players on a bus who had done nothing, as far as we know. And, and a disgruntled person took their life from them. We have light. We have Jesus. We need to get the word out about life in Jesus. Verse 13, let us walk properly as in the day, not in rivalry and drunkenness and lewdness and lust, not in strife, not in envy. Have you noticed that a lot of people like to party at night? Have you noticed, you know, again, uh, in bars, at least on TV, stuff like that, it's always dark in there. Why? Because Satan, Satan, nah, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> that was before I got saved, okay? Before I got saved. Why? Because Satan likes darkness. Evil is in darkness. In verse 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, every day, and I hope you do this, I hope you get up and uh, brush your teeth every day. <laughs> I hope you take a bath at least once a day. And we all put on clothes because you would be arrested if you didn't put on clothes. <laughs> but you know what the deal is here? He's saying, don't forget something. Put on Jesus Christ. Put him on. Don't leave home without him. Oh, there's, man, there's a wicked world out there. There's a troubled world out there. And we have the Prince of Peace. We have God Almighty looking over us. We have Jesus and the Holy Spirit inside of us. So put on Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Romans 12, we just studied this a few weeks ago. Romans 12, verse 18. Romans 12, 18 says, If it is possible, as much depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Folks, there's a solution to every problem. There doesn't have to be an argument in every situation. If two adults can just get together and talk it out and come to a resolution, our world would be so much better. See, what the world really needs right now is a term that we've been using for probably about 10 years now in the Southern Baptist Convention, and it's called relational evangelism. And what relational evangelism is you getting to know someone personally with the very intent to share the gospel of Christ with them and lead them to end the sinner's prayer. I still like our ping pong balls that are out here. There's three colors of ping pong balls there. And I like it that, you know, I, I mean, I go, I, I go by it just about every day of my life because my study is over here and my office is over there, and I, I look in there, and I, I, I look, and I'm thinking, people are still sharing the gospel with others. People are still getting saved. And folks, that's what church is about. That's what church is about. We, as Christians, need to be good citizens. We really do. But we also 
need to be true followers of Jesus Christ. We need to be, you know, in the fields because the Bible says the fields are ripe unto harvest. And the whole deal with, you know, the ping pong balls and, and who's your one is to have that relationship, get to know that person with the gold. And it may take you time. Uh, there's no time. You know, it may take you six months to get to know them and, and well enough where, where you feel that the Holy Spirit says, you know what, in a conversation, now is the time. That's why we have Witnessing Without Fear course. I am so glad for everyone that has taken that course. But we have to do more than just take a course, folks. We have to put it into practice after we take this course. And as the Bible said and we read, folks, time is drawing near. I believe the next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. Oh, it's going to be a glorious day for some. But it's going to be the worst day of some people's lives. Let's share the gospel. Let's tell people about our Jesus. Let's love them with the unconditional love that Christ has for us. Father, thank you for this day. God, thank you that we do love you. There, God, there's no doubt in my mind that most people here love God. And God, I pray that we would just uh, obey our authorities. I understand all that. I pray that we would be Christian examples. God, I pray we'd put our love into action. I pray we would love people and we'd get to know people and we would invest our time and our lives and our scripture in people. We all have people in our families, in our neighbors, in our friends that don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior. And God, I pray that today that would change. I pray that we would write that name down. I pray we would write those initials on a ping pong ball. And I pray, Lord, that we would do everything we do that we can do in the next six months to see them say, God, that is what church is about. That is what heaven's about. That is about why you came to earth and died for us. But God, we give you this invitation. We thank you that you speak to us through the word. And God, I pray if, if somebody needs to just come down and pray, they would just use the prayer altars, rededicate their life, invite Jesus to come into their life, or even follow the Lord in baptism. God, I pray that they would come. Or just watch over folks, and this is your time, and we give it to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. If God has spoken to you in, in any way, would you stand to your feet, and would you come? We thank you for joining us this morning at Rye Hill Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.